Hi there. I'm Louisa Higgins, Arts Administrator for Riverside County Office of Education. And I've put together this fun slide deck uh, for educators and parents that features mermaids, which is a special interest of mine. And my student intern, Adam Rodriguez, helped me get this slide deck started. And then I kept going with it. So I thought I'd share it with you as something maybe uh, for the last week of school, as a fun activity um, center, or possibly during the summer, something to do with your younger age children. So this is just gonna be kind of an overview with some art projects at the end. So here we go. So just in talking about, you know, what is a mermaid? So basically mermaids are half human and half fish and they live in the oceans. And the upper body is actually the human part and the lower part of the body is the part that's fish. So it's the opposite of this little dancing uh, image here on the screen. And mermaids are known for several things, particularly their singing ability and also their uh, benevolence or care of sailors. And there's some famous mermaids out there, of course, you have Disney's Little Mermaid, but there's some other shows around the globe, Mako Mermaids, Just Add Water. And of course, the Barbie movie famously featured um, several mermaids, inc including Dua Lipa and John Cena. But beyond that, going way, way back, there are ancient origins for mermaids and stories. And so in Assyria, they were featured um, in, in, the, uh, in the story there. And they're represented uh, in many, many cultures featuring the beauty of the sea and also the mystery of the sea, what's unknown. And so you'll find them in many cultures. So in African mythology, they're known as Mami Wata, mother of the water. And in African culture, they believe in both mermaid and mermaid men. Um, and in this particular culture, they were kind of a diabolical uh, type of creature that influenced the weather or luring people out into the water, um, which maybe wasn't a good place for them. In Brazil, mermaids are called La Lara, Lady of the Waters, and they have a huge river uh, called the Amazon there. And so that's where they thought there were mermaids. And again, uh, mermaids were thought to cause men to disappear and sometimes be responsible for bad weather. They're also <clears throat> in Chinese mythology and they have kind of a, a more optimistic take on them that they're capable and beautiful and their blessings. And Korea has a similar view. Um, Japan, on the other hand, has something about mermaids where they're that they bring on war, right? So in different cultures, they have different takes on mermaids and what they're capable of. And there's also mermaids in Greek mythology. So again, they thought of mermaids as something that lured as people that lured sailors to their death. Sirens would call um, to sailors. And I think it was kind of the way of, of explaining uh, natural phenomena that they didn't know how else to explain and why ships would founder or sink. And so blame it on the mermaids. For the Vikings, they thought of them as selkies. And so they were a relationship to a seal, not a fish. And so they could be part human and part seal. They could often um, be on the land and sometimes marry humans, even though they would long for the sea. So there's a picture of what a selkie was depicted like on the right. And then you have some famous sightings of mermaids in maritime lore. Uh, Christopher Columbus reported spotting mermaids, and so did Blackbeard. So it's even documented in history of fa famous seagoing captains uh, thinking that they saw mermaids on their voyages. You could also find mermaids in literature. So let's check that out. So probably the most famous is Hans Christian Andersen, uh, The Little Mermaid, and that inspired the very famous uh, movies by Disney. However, the original story is, is a lot sadder and has a lot more poignant um, than the Disney treatment of the Anderson story. And there's a famous sculpture of the Little Mermaid that is there um, in Hans Christian Andersen's birthplace looking out over the harbor. And of course, there's many other stories. So here's just a few. Um, that I found in my research. So they're not, it's not just a little children's stories. It can also be stories for 
uh, teenagers and also adults. So it's it's a rich source of material. And then you have mermaids in pop culture. So how have they come to take their place in the world around us? I think this is probably the most famous mermaid that you see everywhere. And it has a double tail. So it's a twin tailed siren. And she signifies mystique and obsession. And this has, uh, this is from a company that hails out of Seattle. That's where they originated before they came to take over the country and the world. There's Starbucks everywhere, right? You can even find mermaid playlists. So I, you can find that on Spotify. And this one is from YouTube. I'll just play a little snippet. And it's a playlist for a mermaid swimming in the ocean. So check this out. See what we have a little further along. That's kind of haunting melody. After so many years, he might finally appear. Be afraid of the mad king boy. Interesting. Let's see a little further along. So you get the idea there certainly is music out there that can put you in a mermaid frame of mind or give you kind of an homage to all right mermaids have also showed up shown up in music videos so this is uh for you people more my age you might remember Sade this is 1992 and she did a music video for her song No Ordinary Love where she's featured as a mermaid I'll just show you a little bit of that So you can see Sade is playing a mermaid there and you can go and check that out on YouTube. She falls in love with the sailor, but really well done, a really elaborate set. And then the next one that I found in my research was a video by the band Train about their song called Mermaid. I'll show you a little of that. Aloha, welcome to Hawaii. So there's another fun song for you to check out that video I also found on YouTube, yeah. that mermaid motif. And then when you talk about movies, there's quite a few out there. So of course, The Little Mermaid, there's the one that came out 
um, oh gosh, that's got to be 25 years ago on the left. And then the more recent iteration of The Little Mermaid. And also a movie that came out back when I was a young person, Splash with Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah. That's a fun depiction of a mermaid come to land. And then there's been some, you know, not so um, lighthearted versions in Harry Pot Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Mermaids were not depicted as this um, pretty uh, ma mermaid creature. You can see they have gray skin and long wild hair and they were kind of scary actually. So that's another take on mermaids. And if you want to learn more about mermaids, something that's really recent is the Mer People documentary on Netflix. That's like, I want to say it's six episodes, just featuring people who are doing their mermaid thing now, professional mermaids, some of the conventions and famous mermaids that exist right now. So there actually is such a thing as professional mermaiding. And a couple of the um, organizations that certified scuba divers have now taken to scuba dive, uh, certifying mermaids. So PADI, uh, the prof I believe it's the Professional Association for Divers International, has a course, and you have to learn certain skills in order to be a certificated or certified uh, card-carrying mermaid, and that allows you to then be a performer. So here's some pictures that Patty, that's their logo and the on the picture to the right that shows somebody in training to be a mermaid. And so she's swimming backwards with the tail on and she will be doing a number of turns, breath holds and uh, other various skills that mermaids have. And the first professional mermaid um, that we know of was named Annette Kellerman. And she was doing her work back in the early 1900s. And it was a little bit challenging in those days because we didn't have uh, traditional swimsuits like we have today, where they're a bikini or a one piece. And you can see she's completely covered up. Uh, and that was even considered kind of scandalous in the day. So she was the first one that was really acknowledged as a professional mermaid. Another place that's been doing mermaiding for a long time and still to this day is Wikiwachi in Florida. And so they have a natural spring there and they uh, began by hiring young women to um, do dives and tricks and so forth. This is showing a picture back of the day and you can see in her hand, she's holding an air hose. So she's under the water submerged. They would breathe from the air hose and then continue to do their tricks and so forth. So now they do that with tails on but this started back in 1947. So it's a very popular and ongoing mermaid spot. And here's some pictures. Oh, now this is actually a little clip about uh, Wiki Watchy today. So let's watch a little bit of this. So for my girls, mermaids are something that are so magical to them. To be able to come here and see them in real life, it takes it to a whole new level. When that curtain rises, you see the vastness of this beautiful spring, and you, you're just amazed on how fortunate we are as Floridians to have something like this in our own backyard. And then when you throw in beautiful mermaids performing to choreograph music inside the spring, it just adds that much more to the element. It, it's just truly magnificent. I think the little girls are just in awe. When you're swimming the show and you're right up by the windows, you can see them waving. Like the little kids, you can see them press up on the glass and they're like, hey, what's going on? You wave to them. It's just, it's cool to see like all the reactions and how excited they are for the show. And that's what really makes you want to perform. So, you know, we've traveled all over Florida this past year. It's been really neat to see the different places, but this one I think is really extra special. Um, with the mermaids, that's something just, you can't see other places. That is something I think that my girls are gonna treasure for a lifetime. Isn't that neat? So that's a real life place that you can actually travel to and see professional mermaids in action. So what does mermaiding look like today? Well, first of all, there are a variety of mermaid conventions across the country. Mermagicon, the California Mermaid Convention, Afro Mermaid. So that's a place where enthusiasts can get together and dress up and practice their skills and just kind of enjoy all things mermaiding. 
There's also really famous mermaids on IG. And one of the things about mermaiding, it's very size inclusive and very diverse. So this is a famous mermaid uh, named Shea Monique. You also, this is a, a gal who goes under the handle um, at Mermaidens. And you can see she has an entirely different look. And they're also mermen, of course. So this is at Red Riverman, a man who uh, works with Mer Taylor and actually works at that factory where they produce tails. So speaking of tails, there's actually mermaid gear. So some of the big companies that sell these uh, pull-on tails and fins are Fin Fun, that does a more moderate price. And then the Mer Taylor, who's actually a professional mermaid and a seamstress, and he creates some of the real high-end tails that professionals use, but also people who just want to have a good time. And of course, there are mermen too. I don't want to make this exclusively about mermaids, but here is someone named Merman Jax swimming at sea. So he likes to be out in the actual ocean. Some mermaids only perform or do their thing in tanks or in fresh water. So let's take a quick look at him. great video. So you can see Merman Jax is having a great deal of fun and what a beautiful tail he has. Uh, here's another real cute one. This is um, two people who are swimming with tails. You can see they're really beautiful works of art that they have made by Mer Taylor. Come with me to go swim with some mermaids. My mermaid friends had four tails for me to choose from, and of course I chose the green and gold one, so here I am putting it on. Now here I am inchworming over, and I'm about to jump in. I'm so excited. I was born for this. It came so naturally, and I'm obsessed with it. Me and Miss Coral Coy swimming together. Look at our hair flowing. And she told me a little secret underwater. It was the CT. Then I got to put on somebody's big girl tail by Mer Taylor and I became my final form. Just, just look at me go. Then my hair was looking like an ink blot test. Um, but yeah, this is a serious ab workout and it's definitely the most fun ab workout. I had a blast. Isn't that fun? And so you can see how they swim by um, moving their torso because they're not kicking with both legs and also how they get into the tail. You kind of have to sit down and then you add the fin and you slide on into the pool. So that's really what it looks like. Come. So I wanted to wrap this up with a few fun ideas for mermaid arts and crafts. And I found these kind of grouped together on the internet, just using paper plates because I'm really excited about art projects that are simple and inexpensive. So the first one is a mermaid twirler, and I found this at Red Ted Art. And so you're cutting the paper plate in a spiral, and then you go ahead and decorate it from there. And so when it falls out, like based on gravity, then the tail comes away from the top part, which is the head and torso. So that's awfully cute. Here's another one with two paper plates, and you have them uh, facing each other, and then the inside becomes like a terrarium or, or a aquarium, excuse me, an aquarium. So you can create an ocean scene on the inside. And that's just an awful lot of fun that you can have for very little money. This one I thought was too cute too. This is from Just One Mommy. You can find that online. And that's using a fork 
to create like the spiny um, bits of a puffer fish. And I've seen puffer fish underwater and this is a very close rendition. Very, very cute. I love this one too, because I love jellyfish from afar. Don't want to get too close. And this one was on Artie Crafty Kids, using paper plates to make the jellyfish and then using Mod Podge and glitter and streamers to decorate that up. And so I thought that was awfully cute too. And I think this is the last one. This is making sea creatures out of plates. And I found this on Fun 365. So you can do all sorts of things, turtles and crabs and fish and sharks, just all from a simple paper plate. So in closing, I found this poem that I thought was neat. And I think it's why we love mermaids because they're magical and they help us to really focus on the beauty of the ocean and how much of a treasure it is. And, and if you've been underwater or done scuba diving or mermaid, you know, that's absolutely true. And in closing, I just wanted to share with you, again, I love the arts and joy. Here's me doing my mermaid thing. And I hope you enjoy this presentation. Thank you.